Recently, there has been mass confusion over Canva's terms and conditions regarding print-on-demand usage for commercial usage and also selling any designs that you create on Canva in your own Etsy and print-on-demand business. Now, today I did want to clear up that confusion. We're going to look over the initial articles that started this confusion, and then we are going to look over Canva's terms and conditions together to clear up any confusion that there may be. So to start off, I'm gonna share my screen here. Oop, that is the wrong way to share it. As we can see right now, I have on the screen a Facebook post that was created from a quote unquote representative from Canva. It's not confirmed. Maybe it is confirmed. This is not my area to speak on. However, there was someone who was representing supposedly Canva and they made this post with this image attached. I'm not sharing that person's name just for privacy reasons. They put on this post that you cannot sell print-on-demand items and merchandise created with any of Canva's content. And this is the post that started this mass confusion because people saw that this girl was associated with Canva and a lot of people got very confused on, okay, so this person is working for Canva and they're saying that designs created on Canva are not allowed for print-on-demand usage, so what do we do? Following this post, Canva did post on Facebook that we're going to go over in a little bit here that you can use Canva for print-on-demand usage. With that being said, this post does contain incorrect claims. So with that being said, to clarify, you can use Canva for print-on-demand, but you cannot use standalone content or standalone elements. So when this person posted, they did have one correct part of this post that said that you can't use free or pro standalone elements as digital end files, which is correct. That is not incorrect. However, you can use those maybe multiple elements, multiple pieces of Canva content together in a design to sell for print on demand. Now that we have that straightened up, what's really important and what's a good example to show is how does this look like? To further explain this concept, I wanted to illustrate a standalone piece of Canva's content compared to adding in a second element in a second graphic. So as we can see on the left hand side of the screen, there is one corgi by itself. Now this is considered standalone content and not allowed to be used as far as Canva's terms and conditions show. However, if you were to add in a second graphic or text above the corgi, that would be considered within Canva's terms and conditions. Now, I do want to say I do not work for Canva. I cannot directly tell you what is allowed and what isn't allowed. It's really up to Canva's discretion. So if you have any questions, please contact Canva as well. Now, with that being said, for me as a print-on-demand business owner, I would never do either of these examples because it's still not your IP. It's not your own type of design. For those of you sitting here like, okay, what would you do, Heather? That is where I have provided my example of what I would do with these graphics to make it my own IP and use the content the way that Canva is stating for us to use it as print-on-demand business owners and just designers in general. So as you can see, this would be considered an original work because I'm adding in text. I added in another another corgi graphic. By the way, these corgis are so adorable. Also, I added a second text that just says corgi dad below the corgis. So this is something that I would personally sell on my Etsy and print on demand business because first of all, it's not just using one or two elements. It's using multiple elements. This is my own IP, my own idea that I thought would be really cute and different than just putting one corgi on a t-shirt, which we know now is a standalone element and not allowed per Canva's terms and conditions. So as far as Canva's terms and conditions go, I am going to go into another window here and show you the Facebook post that is clarifying this concept that I just showed you right now. And we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into what is allowed and what isn't allowed as we go forward here. So now to go over to the post on the Facebook community, Ed from Canva did make a community update to address this recent misinformation that was spread. And this is the article that goes over selling digital and physical products. So he says, hello, everyone. Thanks for your patience while we reviewed all of your questions and helpful feedback on the topic of selling designs made on Canva. We worked with our team and produced a new help article to provide more clarity on what is and isn't allowed, including some example scenarios. So he then goes in to show this article here. 
So this is the same thing I have on my other tab. I'm going to close that other one. As far as the terms and conditions, they give a guide to using Canva to create digital and physical end products for sale. So the simple version of this is if you want to create a product, you can sell whether it's a t-shirt, an ebook, or a template, it needs to be an original design. This means using our content with a combination of design elements to create a new creative work. For example, you can create a t-shirt design that uses a mixture of graphics and fonts, but you can't just take a graphic from our library, put it on a t-shirt and sell that as is. So going back to that example that I showed earlier with the corgis, again, you're not using that corgi just by itself. You would include multiple corgis. And that is something I recommend. Make it your own. Again, something that's not reproducible that every other print-on-demand seller could create. That's something to say as well as we're going through this video and talking about terms and conditions and IP. So what kind of products am I allowed to sell? This does allow you to use both Canva free and pro content to design and sell a range of products such as eBooks, magazines, templates, posters, mugs, t-shirts, stickers, and other printed products. So again, as we go down to the detailed version of this, when I was talking about not doing just the two Corgi example, while from what we're reading here, it says that you can't use a standalone graphic or element, you should still add in a, another element rather than just another corgi that looks the same as the first corgi. So as far as Canva says, how do you know if your design is original enough? A good question to ask yourself is what I'm selling is a unique design that I have put creative effort into. The point that I was trying to make earlier was just illustrating the concept of a standalone element versus two elements together on a design. However, that still is not that original and for me being on this platform, I would urge you to add in more elements than just those two elements. So now as we go down to example scenarios, when we look at t-shirts and other printed products, they give examples of what is allowed. So John wants to create a t-shirt and mug designs and sell them using print on demand service. John uses a mixture of graphics and fonts to create his original designs. This is allowed under content license agreement. So you go, John, you did it right. That's just one example of what is great to do. So Nadia wants to design and sell posters using POD. Her design consists of a single photo with a border around it. Nadia cannot use pro or free photos from Canva for her poster designs because her use would be considered standalone use. So just adding a border to a piece of content, Canva is stating here that that is something that most likely would not be allowed. Again, if you are on the zone of what you can't tell if it's allowed or not allowed, and I would consider seeking out Canva's further assistance, you can always take a picture or a screenshot of your design, send it to Canva and say, hey, is this allowed in your terms and conditions? That is the best thing that you can do as far as going forward on Canva. Outside of that, this is pretty much wraps up the video that as you can see, Canva Pro you can use for your print on demand designs and items you create with print on demand, but you do wanna make sure that you are creating original works, which has multiple elements in your designs and not just the standalone content. There are a lot of other graphic providers like Creative Fabrica that you can use those graphics standalone if you would like but you could also download a lot of fonts from Creative Fabrica. There is also Kittle that is very print on demand friendly. So there's so many other softwares that you can use. At the end of the day, it's really important for you as a print on demand business owner to make sure that you are complying with the terms and conditions of whatever software that you create. Hopefully this video will help those of you who may have been confused in the recent weeks with all of the things with Canva and all that's happening. Don't forget to like and subscribe, comment any future video suggestions, and I will see you all in the next video here.